Hey guys, this is Endro32, and today I'm going to be showing you how to bounce your MIDI tracks to audio in FL Studio 12. So before we get started, I'm going to explain briefly why you might want to do this. Um, so there's a few reasons. It's primarily to cut down CPU usage, um, because instead of generating the sound, your computer is merely playing the track that's already been rendered. So that's, that's definitely a huge advantage, but that's not the only reason. Um, when you bounce your mini tracks audio, it allows you to control reverb tails, which I've actually which I've done here. You can see that took this whole whole tail and just snapped it right off, and that works wondrously. And it doesn't require you to add any kind of a a gain plugin and do any automation or anything. You just cut it out, it's off the end. So you can do that, and then light air similarly. You can also create some of these kinds of different gate effects that would normally require a separate plugin. So you can hear in this, in this recording that it would be a um, solid, just straight playthrough and I chopped out a bunch of parts. So those are the, the big three reasons. Um, but then there's another reason that a lot of people do it and that is because once you bounce everything to audio, or one track at least, um, you have to rebounce it if you decide you want to change anything. So it helps you commit to your changes and not keep going back and second guessing yourself, which has a lot of advantages of its own that I'm not going to go into explaining. Um, this is kind of like a workflow thing that just helps some people to be more creative because they're going to just go with their gut and not go back and keep second guessing themselves. So what we're going to be doing today, um, so I can show you guys how to do this, is we're going to be bouncing these two tracks to audio and we're going to bounce them separately so they're not going to be combined into one, one audio track so I'll show you how how that works but first let's listen to the just listen to them for a sec here That's pretty much it. So, so uh, to get started with this, there's lots of different ways that you can do this in FL Studio. Um, none of them are particularly wrong, um, but there is definitely some are better than others, just in terms of simplicity, um, just how easy it is, and then the quality that you get after you actually render the render the tracks. So this is the way that I found tends to be the best um, and you'll see me in some older videos not doing it this way because I hadn't learned how to do it yet. Um, but this is in my opinion the best possible way to do this in FL Studio. So we're going to start out with um, changes here, the first track. Uh, and the reason I'm going to start out with that one is because I'm going to do it all as one, as one long recording here. So uh, just to make sure I get the whole rendered or get the whole tail here, I'm just going to listen to this for a second. Right, and that goes all the way until about right here. It goes a little bit past, but it's not really going to matter because we're not going to actually hear that in the context of the entire mix. So you don't have to um, solo out that track. You can actually just leave everything the way it is. So go into the mixer and you're going to click on the little arm disc recording button and then you're going to turn off all the effects on that channel. Um, and then you can go to disc recording, make sure that um, auto create audio clip and 32-bit float recording are on. Latency compensation only has anything to do with live recording and auto on arm is just personal preference. Um, then you're going to render to WAV files um, and then click start. So as long as you've set your project your project data folder um, in the project info settings tab um, then this will automatically render this whole little section that I've selected but you can actually change that if you wanted to do the whole song or just do a pattern much like you do with the final rendering by using the mode the mode selector there um, but anyway it's going to render it save it as an audio file in your project data folder and it's automatically going to add it to the playlist um, so I'll have to do just a little bit of work once it gets into the playlist to change colors and such. Um, but it's it's pretty simple. So you can see there it is. There's the imported audio file. In fact, it actually even continued on to get the entire tail by itself. Um, 
So the first thing I'm going to do here is just cut that back a little bit because we don't need that. And then I'm going to get rid of the MIDI and stick audio back in there. So we'll just, just listen to this nice and quickly here. So you can see that it's it's I mean that's a it's a pretty high quality recording. You're not going to get a lot of clipping or anything. It it does a really nice job when you do it this way. And that's one of the reasons that I like this way is just because it tends to have the highest quality of all the different ways that I've tried. I believe that's because this is literally designed for this exact purpose. So um, I'm just going to go through here and rename and color this uh, just because I can because I have OCD problems. Now I actually have to bring back the, the MIDI here just to grab the color. Alright, so now we have the audio for changes put in, um, so that's all, all bounced to audio. And later on, if we decide we want to, we can cut some of these delay tails, but uh, first we're going to go through and do the same thing with distant except the only difference I'm going to do with this one is that I'm going to record um, each of these or I'm just going to record the first one and then I'm going to simply repeat that audio because it's all the same one and there's no sense in recording a longer than necessary audio clip so the reverb is going to end around here yeah, so I'm just going to extract that out there. So you go to the mixer, make sure that you've turned off on the recording settings for changes or the, the anything else that you've recorded. And then just do the same thing. So again, just arm the disc recording and turn off the effects. And then you can go to disc recording, render to play files. And then again, just make sure it's a song selection. And then you can turn off the recording and re-enable the effects. And there's the, the audio. So I'm just going to grab the color here. And then be really picky because I want to. Yes. Parker, I have no idea. And then you can see that it lines up exactly. So I'm just going to trim off this little bit here. And then we can just... lay that down across there. So there you go. Now the one thing you're going to have to probably do um, is if you've got these um, grouped specially like I do, then you're going to have to probably regroup them. Um, I can't type today. <laughs> and then you may have to reposition them. But. And then the last thing is just uh, reassigning them to the proper mixer track. So that's the reason that I disabled all the effects on here before I rendered them, is that if I have effects plugins in the mixer, I want them to still be controlling the audio so I can change them later on. And if they're active when I record the audio, then there's going to be double whatever effect is there, and that just doesn't sound quite right. So, so anyway, these two are now bounced to the audio. Um, so... Now what we're going to look at is possibly okay, just some different sure. things that we could probably do now if we really wanted to. Yeah, so for example, um, if I wanted to cut some of these reverb tails off here, uh, you're going to use the slice tool. Slice it right there, and then right there. We'll listen to this first. <laughs> Now 
Now those, it's really all a matter of personal preference, and in my opinion, I actually think I like it better with the reverb tails on this particular section. Um, but then we can also try the same thing here with Distant if we want to, and just listen to that and just see how that sounds. And you can hear it's, it really does kind of sound weird because of how suddenly it cuts out. Um, and if that's the case, then there's no reason to, to cut the yeah, reverb tail, um, especially if it's not creating any muddiness. But if it is creating muddiness and making your mix sound really, really nasty and just a bunch of random stuff going on that you don't need, um, this is a great way to fix some of that. Now the other thing that could be going on here is that it's a little bit of space there, so if I just extend that, we'll just listen. You can see how much that space really did fix that problem, um, and actually now I think I'm, <laughs> I think I'm a fan of it a lot more now that I did that. So you can hear how it kind of just helps some of your instruments, like right here, it just kind of helps this spot to pop when you have um, instruments that are right here that kind of just suddenly cut out. Now another thing you can do with this, if you so please, um, is if you split this up right in the middle here and then you make this unique, then you can actually go in and edit this one independently, so edit just the tail and then that will allow you to kind of shorten this t reverb tail up and just quiet it down so it's still kind of there um, but it's a lot less present so you can hear if you listen to this and that's just another little technique and that's probably actually how I'm gonna leave it because I like that um, except right there because I really want this spot to pop but anyway so that's the biggest reason, and that's just how you can bounce this to audio, and then just a little glimpse of some of the I different techniques you can do with it. Um, so really, I mean, FL Studio is really great about having the ability to do this kind of thing, and that's one of the biggest reasons that I love to do, to use FL Studio is just because it lets you do everything you want to do and do it your way, and it has has some really great built-in tools to be able to work with this kind of thing. So, so anyway, I hope this helped you, um, and. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.